Icewind Dale, home to the most hardened of frontiersmen, pioneers, and nomads. Beyond the sporadic dots of civilization dwell terrifying beasts and deadly monsters. Each night before midnight, Oriel takes to the sky and weaves her spell of ice and darkness. For two years, the north of Faerun has been covered in everlasting rime. From Dugan's Hole to Lonelywood, from high atop Kelvin's Cairn down to Mare du Walden. Hungry and cold, the population of Icewind Dale huddles together in empty homes, praying to the gods to end Oril's reign. Their prayers were answered. Heroes summoned by fate have vowed to break the Frost Maiden's spell. I muted myself. God fucking damn it. Hello, everyone. Um, I am Simon at Wondering DM. Welcome to Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Um, I will be, uh, as usual, GMing our group of intrepid adventurers through the snow and the cold of Icewind Dale. That said, before we begin, uh, let's go quickly around the table, introduce your characters, and then let's jump into our adventure. We'll start with the person to my right on the overlay, our resident wizard, Sarkia. Oh, I thought I was a sorcerer. Um, so, hi, I'm Kelly, uh, the upper geek. That's, yeah, that's me. I play Sarkia, who is in fact a wizard, not a sorcerer. And I'm getting better at remembering that every week. Mm. Up next is the mysterious Ragnar. You're muted, is what you are. <laughs> yes. Yes. Can't hear you. Oh, little tech Hold issues. On. That's okay. Bit. We'll we'll come back to Ragnar. Um, what about the uh, equally mysterious Alice? Uh, more, but <laughs> hi, uh, I'm Kumai and I'm playing Alize, the rogue you might think, but you might be wrong. <laughs> Next up, the very friendly and cuddly Etten. Hello. I am Etten, I am the cleric, and I am the voice of Luthander, and I am the town greeter of Very Very Cool. You are, and uh, last but not least, the well, not last in this case because we skipped over Regnar, uh, but the um, strong and resilient Goliath. Everybody, I am Diana. Um, I'll I'll be Halloween this evening. Um, I kissed a bear and I liked it. I still don't know what it means. <laughs> and uh, let's just uh, zip through the overlay and get back to uh, Silent Ragnar. Serious that way? Um, can you talk again? 
I should say. Uh, let's see. Yeah, you. It's really Here. weird. Yeah, you sound like a AM radio announcer. Oh, is it less mysterious? Ah, uh, yes. Now more yeah, now, mysterious. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I'm Ragnar, the even more mysterious ranger and pirate Jesus. At the same time, apparently. I mean, I would have to be just by <laughs> actual use. He's Simon. Yes. Devin wants me to sing happy birthday to her. It's Devin Rue's birthday. It is Devin Rue's birthday. Um, Who wants to sing happy birthday with me? I mean, Yay! we can. Oh, this is going to be bad. We're not going to sync up. It's going to be terrible. Yep. <gasps> okay, this is going to be great because we're also going to all start on different keys. This is awesome. Ready? Yeah. Happy, happy birthday, birthday Devin. To you. What? Happy, happy birthday, birthday to you. <laughs> happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> you. There you go. And many more. <laughs> Devin's not friends with any of us anymore. I just want to know. She, that. She, She's she. done. <laughs> yeah, I just got a message that I was blocked on Twitch. Um, <laughs> so that that said, and that sung, um, last week was a rather um, strange and emotional session. It was unbearable. Ah. Hey, Billy, will you hit him? No, he just... he's... He's <laughs> throw something. He's really far across the room. I could throw the dog. Oh, yes. No, I like no. Scotty. No. There were some tender moments shared between um, Halifine and Oyaminar Tok. Um... After a violent ritual, Halifine was made Oya's child, a gift that she does not bestow upon um, anyone lightly. And she spoke of a... I'm not going to say prophecy, more of a warning that the Goliaths of Icewind Dale are going extinct. And that, uh, that she counts on Halifine to rally them and hopefully Allow them to survive this very difficult period. No pressure. No pressure. She pointed southeast to um, Sky Tower Shelter. And told Elephine that she would need to go back home if she wanted to hope to save any of the tribes. And that's where we left off. There were a few other moments. Alice A felt betrayed by Halifine. Etten through a uh, rays of fire. <laughs> Oya Minartok. I punched her. You punched her square in the jaw. It was my only good roll of the night. And, um. Hit. Not damaged. And Regnar rifled through everyone's belongings. Almost there. We everyone. found out that I have little dragon potions that lets him be all big and dragony and Ragnar thinks it's a bad idea but I think it's a great idea so little of column A little of column B 
So we'll pick back up basically where we left off, maybe a few minutes later. You're still standing in the tundra. The wind blows around you. And the cold doesn't seem to uh, to abate in any way. Oya, having said what she needed to say, will turn around and say, in uh, reassuming her uh, werebear form, If you need anything, you can use my cave. I, however, have to get on the move for a bit. Oh, um, okay. Where, where will you go? Oh. In case uh, I wanted to write, I mean... I will still come back to Karakonig from time to time, but I am called the Winter Walker for a reason. It is both both a title and an obligation. I understand. Fret not. We will see each other again. Many more times. So, um, to, uh, oh, yeah, I, um, and then she'll just go in and, and do another one of her, her super tight hugs. A bear hug? Oya will bear hug you back. Be safe, okay? Oh. Always. I haven't been scared of uh, dying until uh, earlier this morning. Your friend here gave me quite the fright. And she points to Eden. Eden did? No, don't, don't you mean that one? And I'll point to Ragnar. No. Yes, you in heard my corner. friend. Tharkia's in the corner and she just looks annoyed. Like, she's, she's like, I almost broke my hand, but sure, whatever, fine. I, I drink coffee. I mean, I made it myself, but none of the rest of you drank it. It wasn't that bad. <laughs> Thank you for everything. She, uh, would like bend bend over to be able to reach your forehead and give you a kiss on your forehead. Um, thank you for being here. I'll figure out what to do about Sky Tower. Um, I'll figure it out. And then she'll she'll sort of let go and um, start to, to help the others gather their stuff together uh, to figure out our, our next move. Like, trying, trying obviously not to, to bear witness to Oya actually leaving. I mean... No one, no one make a joke of bear witness, Now please. that you're a werebear, you could actually bear witness. Uh... I 
I don't know what's going on. Tharkia will kind of take Etten by the elbow and pull him very slowly over to the corner. So, you see, when Oya bit Helifine, you, you saw that? Yes? It, yes, and I it ticked him. Um, yes. Uh, Helifine is now like Oya is. Uh, old? Excuse me. Mm, no. She can turn into a bear. Ooh. Well, that's very useful. For the cuddle pile. Sorry, yes. did not say that. Oh, yes. Quite that. warm. More fur. And, uh... At least to me. Well, we're not going to get into that. But that seems to be what happened. Uh, well, um, uh, so am I marrying them? No, no, no. Oh. Okay. Well, I'm sure you'll find somebody to marry to perform a marriage for at some point. Okay. Ragnar seemed really into that bird. I you did it when he killed. He killed it. I prob we probably then ate it later on. I meant the hatchet beak thing, not the one he shot out of the sky. Oh. oh. He, like, expert. bonded with it! I, I think you're, you're thinking of Alizé. She's the one who kept trying to ride it and get kicked off. No, I mean the opposite of that. It liked you. Maybe it's a werebird. That would be very strange to think about in general. Yeah, it would. Because then, who's the random person nope. that's just hanging around in our cave when they turn back to normal? And be like, hey man, what's up? And they're like, oh yeah, no, I'm Dave. I'm just here for when you I, guys are packed up and ready to go. I'm just go turn wanna, back. I don't want to think about this anymore. It's I, I regret everything. So, really? uh, but it's okay. I don't need to slay the werebear, even though she bit. No. No, that was, that was a good thing. I know it didn't seem like it, but look, I'm I'm fine. Mm. Okay. I'm obviously not fine, by the way, because I don't oh, think yeah. I've got the opportunity to heal much since since this whole thing happened. I well, don't look great. First thing this morning. <laughs> Yeah, didn't Etten, I believe Etten or Ragnar tried to heal you? I know Ragnar, Ragnar tried and she was got, She got three suplexed. hit points. I mean, it's not, it's not a lot. It's not like I do a lot of healing. And then Ragnar got body slammed. Yeah. I mean, it's touch, so she still got the healing. Yep. She just didn't notice it because she was preoccupied, which is fine because he would prefer it that way, actually, so. Um, uh, I, I know, I know we were on, on our way to the, to the cabin. Do we, do we still need to go? I, I can, I can, it's going to take me some time to work out what to say. Sky Tower. I, I, oh, my stomach hurts. Well, we're going to East Haven, the town nearby. And, Remember? And then, and, and then what? And then you all can go 
whatever magical quest you want. Uh, no, we have to step Uru and bring yeah. the light of Lathander to all the people. Yeah, w- what he said. It's a tall order. Yes, I am tall. It's not. To, to East East Haven, then, and we'll we'll figure it out from there. Who wants to go crazy rugging on my sled? That sounds disturbing, Edson. We can make up a lot of ground from these mountains by riding the sled down. Oh, but we can't all ride the sled. I don't think. Me and the dogs on one. I, I think we mostly want to cut across the plateau. We don't need to go up the hills and back down them over and over again. He has a oh. y- You can if you want, and I'll just wait for you guys in East Haven. I promise. You say that. I do say that. Hellofine, like, keeps trying to pick up little little pieces of our camp and, like, hand them over to Sarkia and Alize, like, keeps trying to, like, make eye contact with both of them, and um, I mean, Sarkia already packed her stuff. Her stuff's already ready, so she doesn't... doesn't Right, she's gonna pick up, like, rocks and things like that too, and just... Sarkia will look at her, like, is your bag not packed? You seem upset. Oh, I'm sure I'm not upset. Your eyebrows tell a very different story. Look, I've had a lot of people mad at me in my time. My, my eyebrows like have a life upset. of their own, I must say. I can't control them. Can, can you... Can you tell me why? Either... One of you, Alize, I thought, I thought we were okay. Yep. We are. I it's just don't. that before you do something like that you should maybe let people know that it's something you wanted then Etten wouldn't have you know so, tried to burn her I, I can and I, I wouldn't have tried to punch her I, I can see how an outsider's perspective that probably didn't look so great um I'm I'm sorry. Hmm. And Sarkia just like pulls on her backpack and she checks to make sure that Thrun is still in there, probably snoring or something. I don't know. Um, she she and- is a a very sound sleeper. That's true. Um, and then she just Ragnar um, notes that. <laughs> <laughs> And she just kind of, um, kind of heads out uh, uh, of the cave mouth to go check and make sure that the dogs are, you know, tied up to the sled and everything. I mean, they're not. Ragnar has taken care of his axe beak, and he has left all the sled dogs and everything else ready for everyone else to do themselves. Okay, so she'll start working on it. Tell yourself so. You Uh, asked that to the dogs? Uh Uh-huh. Go ahead, get ready. Oh, apparently everyone is loud. I'm louder than everyone. Um, <laughs> let me check. Let Those loud check. puppy noises. Yeah. Uh, can someone talk just to see? Talk, no. talk, talk, talk. Yep. Talk. Uh, that <laughs> that might be that. better. Okay. That might be better. Um. So, the dogs look at you, Etten, and they go, bark, bark, and they excitedly run up to the sleigh, they, the sled. They can't really like, put the harnesses on themselves, but they line up with the sled so that you have only to take the harnesses, put them on them, strap them, and be ready to go. What, what is they dog? need someone with opposable thumbs. That's what I was about to say. What's dog for and the lack of dispo- or opposable thumbs? Not disposable thumbs. Oh, goodness. Opposable thumbs. What the heck? 
disposable. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, and they wait for you, Etten, to uh, to strap him in. You do so. I do so. Back in the cave, uh, you can hear Oya uh, just humming to herself uh, and rolling the uh, some of the skins and putting all of that like against the far wall. And uh, she says, uh, "Whole um." Halafine, would you mind coming here for a moment? Uh, she's going to glance between Alize and Sarka and then just sort of like speed walk over to where Oya is. Uh, I... I know how goodbyes can be difficult. Uh, I I'm I'm not a big big fan. This is not a goodbye. This is merely a see you later. But here, um, I don't here, and she takes off a uh, necklace it's really nothing more than a uh, a leather string upon which are attached four um walrus's tusks do you make it yourself i um s- sort of <laughs> i had to Wrestle them for food. It looks like they lost. Uh, th- 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 thank you. Thank you. I'll, I'll take good care of it. So. I guess I'll, I'll see you later. <laughs> yes. You think they're gonna be mad at me forever? I mean, should should I just come with you? At the... I am going to a place that offers nothing to those who still need to eat and shelter. One day you'll be able to follow me. I am certain of it. But for now, for now, I think you should go with your friends. And Ragnar. Not sure they'd call me a friend at this point, but okay. And if you find yourself cold one night just think about me okay I'm not often cold but you'll be in my thoughts anyway And she would take you in another big bear hug. I lean into it. And I'm probably blubbering a little bit, like trying really hard not to, but I'm probably getting a little bit of like snot and tears on her fur. A little. It's okay. It's okay. Just be careful. Always. Not like careful for 
a, an immortal being who can't die, but like careful. For someone who has a family. For someone who's cared about. I now have a reason to come back. You also be careful. You're still a, a cub after all. I'll do my best. All right. On that note, um, she takes a few steps back. And she takes the rope with all the knucklehead trouts. And she ties it around her waist. Time to see how long this jerky can last. Too long. And she starts walking back up the the, the passage of the cave to go outside. Jalapeno will, will take a moment to sort of collect herself um, before rejoining the group and gathering up her own personal possessions for travel. Uh, she won't get on one of the dog sleds, though, if they're prepared. Or her, it, it's her intent to either walk or jog alongside it because she knows she doesn't want to... She knows she's not welcome with a couple of these individuals right now. Where to, group? Is it still at East Haven? Going back to the comfort of civilization? That is where Ragnar is pointed. You set off from the... Or set out, I should say. I from the cave. And make your way towards East Haven. Along the way, I would like uh, those of you who are keeping an eye out um, to make a survival check, please. This is going to go well. Huh? Not terrible. Could be 20, worse. 25, 17, 8. Ah, some tracker you are. <laughs> <laughs> mine gets mine gets doubled when I'm in my favorite terrain, so. 16. <laughs> I'm still oh, over the it's your, <laughs> it's your proficiency. My bonus, yeah, my proficiency gets doubled, so I'm saying it's not 8, it's uh, 12. Wait, something doesn't work. Your check doesn't have your proficiency on it. Uh, yeah, I don't know why the guest doesn't take that into account because it's, you know, role specific, so. Uh, let me check. No, but I mean, even the role by default doesn't have. Are you proficient in survival? Yeah, it's got the mark next to it. Wow, it did not register it at all. Oh, no, it did. Over. It did. Okay, no, no, no. My bad. I thought you were higher level than you are. I know, I know. <laughs> No, you expect only, him to be better than a 12, right? Like, that seems really, <laughs> really low. You notice um, Alizé, Etten, um, Sarkia, and I don't know if uh, Halifine was paying attention to where you were She's going. She's distracted. She's distracted, okay. Um, there are faint tracks... Um, as you make your way closer to East Haven, uh, faint tracks of uh, large bear paws in uh, in the snow, mm. but like larger than larger than a bear. Is there a bear? 
No, no, a were bear. Where? Where bear? No, there bear. <sighs> their dog. Yes, 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 their dog. Their bear. Where? Where bear? The whole rest of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> There, you there, you there. do not notice any creature, however. Um, the tracks come and go. How long ago did they pass through? And uh, how many not, was there? You would not have seen them unless someone specifically says something. Yes, there. Bear. Oh, there, bear. Okay. Uh, yes, and, and, and who bear? Looking at the tracks without a, uh, yeah, I think it's because you and Justin are both uh, unmuted. Yeah, it's because he has an open mic, he refuses to mute. I like to spite you. Um, it is one creature that must have passed by during the night. Um, it was headed to, not directly to East Haven, sort of. A little more north, probably by the shores of Lake Denishir. A large animal, larger even, judging by the, the footprints, than a uh, polar bear. I would continue to ignore it and head to East Haven. We should avoid that. That is the idea. It's it's heading the same way we are, right? Uh, not really. It's it's basically diverting. Okay. So in that case, yeah, it's easy to avoid. By mid afternoon, you crest a hill, and you see in the distance the small town of East Avon. It seems quiet, almost peaceful. You can see the silhouette of uh, people going to and fro across the streets. While not as big as Bryn Shander, uh, East Haven is probably the second biggest city. Maybe on par with Targos. Um, it is not walled. And most of the buildings are only one story high. Though you do spot a few that seemed to tower over the rest of town. There are several ships stuck in the uh, harbor, one of which is considerably bigger than, um, than all of the rest. We're talking about a... Um, a th is it a three-mast ship? Um, let me check. Uh, oh, sorry. It is, it is. Yeah, it's a, um, a three mast ship a large vessel that normally would be more at home in um luskin yeah luskin or or even um you know on the open seas rather than on a large lake it's not flying any colors and its sails have all been um furled You so walk down Sarkis, the hill. Oh, yep. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sark is, uh, you know, familiar with boats a bit, considering where she's from. Um, and she's just like, well, that's odd. That's a bit big to be in a lake, don't you think? Is, is the fishing trade that steady? Was. Long time ago, I assume, because that ship looks like it's in, uh, not the best of repair. Yeah, well, ice will do that. 
suppose. Just odd. Continues on. Uh, while we're while we're doing this in Cresting the Hill, Ragnar will um be tightening about his person, as it were. Uh, there is no extraneous, loose hanging things on him. His, per his, his, his any of his purses or his other items are now very securely tucked away on him, including his weapons and other bits, and on his uh, pack animal. Why are you scared of being pickpocketed? In East Haven? Kelly says. Sorry, he doesn't know. Um, you crest down the hill and um, make your way to um, to the uh, the small town of East Haven. Ragnar mutters under his breath, shithole. <laughs> By the time you arrive, um, it would be about dinner time. Uh, for if if it wasn't for the uh, for the perpetual twilight, the citizens or what few citizens of East Avon. Who notice you coming in? Don't Hello. really. Some wave. They're going about their ways, uh, trying to keep warm. Uh, one of them, uh, however, does break from the little pack of, of uh, three people they were walking with and uh, come up to you and say, uh, Hello. Name's Danith. Hello. Hello. He doesn't Hello. have anything of value. I'm, I'm Itten. He's simple. He doesn't have any money. I uh, do not intend to take anything from him. Etten, you said. It, it's correct. We are on a mission from the Fender to save this world from this I, perpetual ice. I don't think they want to hear. No, actually. Nonsense. I Everyone would. wants to hear about the light of the Fender. Oh, they if... may just not know it. If you plan on uh, saving uh, the, this, this region, uh, our region, the cold and the snow. Uh, come, come with me. Um, we can sit down and, and chat. I believe you might have, must have a plan. Uh, it. We just have one little uh, thing going on in the uh, in front of the town hall uh, right now. Um, is where we were going. I figured you, being uh, out of towners, would probably like to know where you could leave your. Uh, packs and your animals uh, no no I suppose they're out of towners but I would be fine with my packs just where they are I, I actually would like to know um, where's a good place to leave where do a lot of people leave their stuff he just said it was a shithole we probably shouldn't leave them anywhere I just want to know. <clears throat> um, um, can I leverage at all my background and do like an insight check to see how honest these people are? Sure. What was your background again? Um, well, not my not my book background, but my character backstory, where she's from. Oh, oh, um. Yeah, I mean, uh, from from what you would know without a check, um, the people of East Haven aren't um, they have a stigma <laughs> mm -hmm. because the town was founded by thieves. 
running away from the law. So it um, it became a sort of refuge for all manners of um, ne'er-do-wells who would like to escape scrutiny. Um, okay, and I'm also, I'm going to just, you know, take a good look at them while Ragnar's talking and Alize's talking to them. Of course, why wouldn't it be? Every time I'm proficient in something, why wouldn't it be? <laughs> um, Alize also has criminal background, so uh, I assume, like, from the way they approached and things, she is on to what they're trying to do, right? Um, yeah, as a criminal, in fact, um, you can see that the person in front of you is not a criminal in the sense that they they don't have the wit the experience mm -hmm. uh to not that they don't have a bad bone in their body they probably do um but they are not an experienced criminal they're not a con artist they're not a uh, they might be descended from such people. Mind you, the person could probably be just a, you know, your average, um, um, you know, tomb robber. But he doesn't seem to be the type of person that would try to con people out of their belongings. Okay. Yeah, I, um, I would like to try to see where um he wants us he wants to take us to and Elise is ma mainly hoping that she'll find a place where you know they convince others to store their things um well the place he mentions is the white lady inn okay it is uh well the only inn in town in fact uh <laughs> uh if if you um if you wish uh, to, to sleep, to rest. Uh, there's also the um, the wet trout, if you wish to drink. Ooh. The white lady uh -oh. does not offer much drinks. Uh, I see you uh, perked up at the mention of the white trout and the drinking. He's really into fish. Yes, let me introduce you to old lady. This is my fish. He sings. Hey, didn't that belong to uh, Strax nope. and Brinchander? It's mine. I accomplished a goal and I got it. Huh. Well, well, the old man decided to get rid of one of his few uh, money makers. Yes. Well, like I said, we're on a mission to save the world and he thought it would help us. And, and that's step one. We acquired a sixth fish for Lathinder. But, um, Ethan, what are the other... No, I don't want to know what the other steps are. I'm not... No. no. Uh, well, step one, no. you got the five fishes, and then we got the six fishes, and then last step is save the world. From what? Uh, The lady in the sky. Oh. Nar just drinks. The lady Ragnar in the sky. Nar just casually kicks his axe beak towards the town square. Oh, goodbye. No, I think we need to go with him, Etten. Uh, thank oh. you very much for your information, though. Oh. We do appreciate it. No worries. Uh, the uh, white lady is just beyond town square. Um, you'll find it once Simon changes the map on Roll20. Oh. Ooh. A strange term. I know, right? Is he like a good? So, the uh, white lady is, uh, you just follow the main thoroughfare beyond, uh, past the town hall, 
and uh, it's right after the uh, where the uh, ferry is moored at the moment. What what is happening at the town hall or in front of it? Oh, um, we we caught a uh, we caught a sacrifice. A what? Me what? Why? Why, yes, to stave off the anger of the Frost Maiden. What is it, this fish? What, what are you sacrificing exactly? A red wizard. Or he says we with not. a lot of, like, we hatred. We not do that, I think. Human sacrifice. You're not a big fan of wizards, then. You think I'm a sorcerer? Oh. We're not a big fan of those who would come here and try to ruin everyone, but... Uh, might I just ask, how... How were they ruining everyone? Hmm. That would be Captain Arlegath's... Uh, Jurisdiction, mostly. I trust her through and through. Oh, oh. Um, so and... you don't know? Oh, I, just... I mean, I know a few things. Uh, he's a red wizard. Got that uh -huh. part. He didn't come alone to the north. Who would? And, uh, we have reasons to believe that the Red Wizards are attempting to ally or contact the Frost Queen. I mean, they're not usually the best people, but are you sure he's actually a Red Wizard, or are you just... Well, okay, first off, back up. I assume I would know that, right, Simon? With that. Uh, the Red Wizards. Well, everyone sort of knows that they exist. Mm -hmm. That there's this um, spooky organization of, of Infamy. Yeah, but no one knows exactly what they are. Um, you would need either a history check or a um, arcana check. Are you freaking kidding me? Well, that's still not bad. Um, with an 11, uh, yeah, you know, you know that they're from the far east, that they're a majocracy. And uh, that they answer to an undying lich who they is attempting. Nice yeah, they're attempting to claim magic for their own. Mm -hmm. Basically, they're. Um... Yeah, they try to police other people's magic. Yeah. Yes. In the sense that only. Oh, yeah, and they're slavers. They're, they. They work in human trafficking, yes. Yeah. Uh, so. so, Sarki would continue, you know, those, um, it's a bit of a, 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 a boogeyman tale here. Are you sure this is a red wizard? Had the markings and everything. Wait, so there's really something called as red wizards, Sarki? Mm, yes. It's they're, they're not usually here. That's why I'm... No, they are not. But like I said, I trust Captain Arlegoth. She's the one who led the investigation and the one who arrested said wizard. And, um... Well, and he looks back at the town hall and... Like, it, it, 
Y'all are far away from the town hall, but you can see a column of smoke beginning to rise. Uh, We're going to miss the ceremony. Uh, okay. Um, Sarkia hops off the sled and she's like, Etchen, I'm just going to, I'm going to, to go on ahead. Is that okay? Oh, we, we should go together. Then... They're sacrificing wizards. You're one. Shh. We, maybe you should stay with us. You would. You didn't hear that, Kelly. Oh, sorry. I said I'm not a red <laughs> wizard, Ed. Uh, we, you have red hair. Well, Sarkia doesn't, but oh. I did that. <laughs> Kelly's a red wizard. Sarkia's <laughs> not. Oh, I I am obviously in league with an undying lich and want to take over the world. Sarkia is a lot different. Someone oh. clipped that. She admitted it. <laughs> He's a ginger. This is none. <laughs> um, but uh, Etten, I'm not sure that it's, they're going to execute an actual red wizard. So um, if you are coming, I think we should hurry. And she just turns and like starts walking very briskly towards the square. I, I stay on the dog sled and pass her because they move faster. You, you Okay, bye! <laughs> I'll start sprinting and pick up Sarkia on the way. <laughs> All right, that leaves... Uh, oh, yes? Nothing. She was just like... <clears throat> and she gets picked up. I'm assuming like fireman's carry. Yeah. Yeah. Or like and... a football. <laughs> okay. Um... Alizé, you are left behind. Uh, do you follow the rest of the group? Or do you head towards the White Lady Inn, the place that um, the man told you where you could find, um, you know, a place to, to leave your belongings? Um, I assume that was on the sled. Um, oh, okay, so you're... Was, yeah. <laughs> you have no choice but to follow. <laughs> Mm -hmm. We have two sleds, right? Still? Yeah, two no? sleds and one axe beak. That axe beak is long gone while you guys were doing your bit, so. Um, by the time you. We'll start with Regnar, and I'll call when everybody else gets there. Um, but Regnar gets to the, uh, the town square at. Sk and few moments after they started the fire. Uh, because they, indeed, started the fire. Who? I thought it was always burning. We didn't yeah. start the fire. <laughs> no. God. It hurts, you guys. <laughs> it's the only lyric I know. From the, the world was turning, Kelly. Uh... <sighs> so... You notice a crowd gathered in front of the town hall. Um, they, uh, most of them have taken off their mittens and are warming their hands close to the uh, great bonfire that uh, has started to, uh, to, to, to ignite. Um, it doesn't take a, in, an expert in pyrology. Anyway, to... Pyromancy! Uh, well, no, because pyromancy is like divination through fire. I'm talking about like knowledge of fire and flames and, and how to start fires. Pyromaniac. Pyromaniac. Well, isn't a pyromaniac someone who likes to start fires? Like, what's the study of fire? Pyrology. I just made that up. Don't listen to me. Yeah, no, I, that's what I said. I just Anyway. Uh, Tinder studies. Basically, they soaked, doctor. <laughs> they soaked the logs in whale fat and oil. The fire spreads at a pace that makes it impossible for even a spellcaster. Well, maybe an experienced spellcaster would have time to whisk themselves away. But this one is tied with their hands behind their back. Actually, behind the uh, pillar that the giant log 
that uh, juts out of the bonfire. Their hands tied behind them, um, and uh, they are wearing thick, now on fire, uh, gray robes lined with sheepskin and a wide-brimmed conical hat. Oh my god, they're burning Gandalf. Yeah, they're basically burning Gandalf. Uh, except that this person has <laughs> this person does not look like Gandalf um, this uh, person that you can see very briefly before the flames catch up to him uh, is a young man with tussled brown hair and just a little um, uh, not even a full goatee but like just the, the chin um, that has, you know, gotten longer and, and wilder, uh, and it catches fire like nothing. Um, in front of the crowd, um, there is, uh, there are two people. One who seems to make sure that no one goes too close to the fire. Uh, a woman dressed in armor. Uh, she has dark skin, long black hair uh, in uh, locks that go down to almost like her elbows. She has a simple longsword strapped to her back and uh, is instructing other militia members to keep like a, a wide enough perimeter around her. The other person uh, that is there is um, an elf. And um, I will let Kelly describe that elf. You gotta unmute. Um to describe. Uh, no, I'm just grumbling. I'm grumbling because uh, someone didn't warn me about this. I didn't have a description ready. Oh, okay. If um, you No, 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 but that's okay. If you don't, I will go in and I can create one. Oh, go ahead. Yeah, because I mean, if it yeah, you know the whole thing. She's going to obviously recognize. This. Yeah. Um no problem. You were a high elf before, right? Yep. And uh, out of curiosity, what was your class, career, what did you do? Goodbye, Justice. Um, oh, oh, no, back. Jack. Sorry, I'm Zoom back. just, like, crashed and restarted. I'm sorry. That no, was, no, that's um, okay. Um, maybe some kind of for hire... Like bounty hunter, maybe. I'm not sure. Okay. You, I wasn't prepared for this. My bad. <laughs> um, but I will go with uh, something that I have. Um, and uh, if if we need to change... Okay, go right ahead. That's can. fine, that's fine, that's fine. There is a... Um, a high elf woman dressed in uh, winter clothing, reinforced in some places. You can see that her ears are adorned with multiple uh, earrings. And she, much like Sarkia, has blonde white hair. Her eyes, are, ever, however, are... Sort of this glassy gray um, that is almost unnerving to watch. And she's there basically riling up the crowd. Um, so <clears throat> Ragnar gets there first, obviously. Yeah. Um, Sarkia would, uh, you know, come into the square, thrown over Helifine's shoulder and then hop down, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, before she would notice uh, the elf, I think she would take a look at the person on the pyre 
Um, what sh what would you have me roll to see if I could see if he was actually a red wizard or not? That would be perception. Also, if Ragnar wanted to do anything before you got here, I'll let Ragnar do something. Um, uh, he would have uh, just went straight through the crowd to the front, you know, to wherever the people are and where the front of the pyre was. Just like on his, you essentially using the axe beak to, you know, part the crowd as it were, so that people, you know, get out of my way. All right. Okay, so perception. Yeah. Same for uh, at this point. Actually, Eton would have gotten there right before. You. Are you just freaking? I. <laughs> Jesus. Um. I'll On let fire. Eton. I forgot. Yes, I forgot I'm, that Eton yeah. was going faster though. Uh. So I'll just we'll skip to Eton first. My bad. I assumed for a moment that Elephine ran faster than a dog sled, but no. Um. You don't know. I'm fast. Yeah, but I was checking their stats and. They're faster for now. For now. But only for now. 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 Uh, so yeah, Etna, was there anything you wanted to do um, when you got with the, the dogs to, to the site of the town hall? Okay, to the town square. This is strange, but um, everything I do is fire, so I can't put out the fire. Also, oh. Etten doesn't believe in disrupting other people's traditions. He sacrifice a tradition? He? No. Um, for... Um... Oh, wait a second. Can you hear a voice in the background for me? Okay, two seconds. Yeah, from someone. Goodbye. How's everybody doing? Any consolation. He probably inhaled the the flames, and he's, he's long dead. He is. Kelly, who is this? Kelly's not telling you that, but she's telling you that she's getting extremely frustrated with these dice rolls that have been consistently below 10 for the past three sessions. Roll better. I think I just rolled up this violin here. Also, if wow. you Wow! Give... Okay. Etten, so. Indications, he can cast guidance. The guidance. But I wasn't yes. with you. Just, you know, just for future. For future reference. <laughs> mm -hmm. You cannot see any markings. This person is wearing heavy winter clothes and a big hat. Aside from their face and a bit of their hair, there's nothing that would mark them as a wizard, even less so a red wizard. Okay. Um, Sarki is going to move around the edge of the crowd. Uh, she has not seen the elf yet. She's going to move around the edge of the crowd and um, get within sight of the pyre. And then you would see and her. She's... Yes, but before I see her, I'm going to try to cast Mage Hand behind the flames and untie his hand. Your mage hand cannot untie hands because oh, right. you're not an arcane trickster. That's right. You could summon a mage hand to just like pat him on the forehead. Why, why would I pat him on the forehead, Simon? I don't know. Ellen will be what? over real quick. Yeah, he's oh. he's shouting out. Uh, in uh, in in pain but also manages to get one last sentence uh as the flames just uh you know devour him he says you cannot kill me i will be back again okay maybe he was a bad guy okay that's good okay, um, goodbye bye <laughs> um <clears throat> So, yeah, as she comes to a stop and she looks over at the pyre, um, she would then see this elf and just be 
like she's already very fair skinned, but she is going to lose any color in her face whatsoever. Just nothing. Cold wind, nothing. Not gonna help. Er and she backs up to get behind someone. So, Sarkin, are you okay? Mm-hmm. You, you look a little pale. I'm just tired. Um, um, I don't think we should, I, I don't think we should talk to that captain person. I think we should just go to the inn. Well, no, we, we should probably figure out w I don't why we they're should. setting people on fire. Um, hey, Simon. Hmm? Uh, so this this other high elf looks an awful lot like Sarkia, you said. How does, she, like, she has, like, white blonde hair and porcelain yeah. skin. How does that compare to the other folks in the area? Like, do these two stand out in the crowd? Yeah, she doesn't look at all. The eyes, the eyes stand out. They both have strange eyes. So would I have noticed the other elf? Uh, you mean, okay, which other elf? Well, the Cause... the one that is scaring Sarkia, but I have not made that connection yet. Hell yes, you would you would yet. definitely uh, notice her. Sarkia, is Sarkia an elf? No, but we'll let Halifin continue. S Sarkia, she looks just like you. No, I'm I'm really tired. Um, I uh, I really I want to get some food. Um, do you think um, uh, where's Et Etten has jerky? We can go to the inn and get some food. Wait, you're you're willing to eat jerky right now? Can I insight check to see if everything is okay? If everything seems okay with Sarkia? I'm how how flagrant how flagrant is it? It's 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 more just that she's stammering and thrown off kilter. Well, she so... just agreed to eat jerky, so yeah. No, I'll um yeah uh make make an insight check. You know she's not feeling well. I mean, Helafine is not exactly the brightest crayon in the box, you guys. I'm just throwing that out there. Ooh, we have crayons. That's a nine. Yeah. No. Um. You know there's something off, but you can't put your finger on on it exactly. Uh, well, what? Uh, why, why don't you and? Um, can you just go ahead for a minute and I'll 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 catch up. I thought you just said you were hungry. Just, I, no, I'll be right behind you. I was gonna talk to the captain lady. No, please, just we'll, we'll do that later. But she's right there. Uh, okay, okay. If you're talking to me, if your boss will be around, but you're talking to me, that's the last thing. I'm drinking. And I'll kind of like muttering to myself about how her telling me what to do is better than giving me the silent treatment. I'll kind of like go back from whence we came. Um, Sarkia is going to very. What the hell just fell in our kitchen? Sorry. Um, <laughs> Sarkia Ooh. is going. To go see it. Uh, going to take very gently reach her hand into her bag and like behind her cape she's going to pull out um, um, Brune and point him towards the elf uh -huh. can you just make a note of that person please just you know uh. Yeah, it's a person. Remember what they look like. I. Uh, all right. Okay. This person. I will elf. feed you if you don't. Elf earrings, or silver hair. Yeah. She puts him back in the bag, um, and um, starts to retreat from the square. She does not turn her back at any time to this elf or to the woman that the elf is with. She kind of backs up until she, I assume, would back right up into Etten. Um, 
and she's just like, I'm, uh, should we, um, should we go to the inn? Hey, well, shouldn't we see the fireworks? He's already um, dead, at Fireworks, but I, why, why There's did no you fireworks. run, why did you run here? Like, what, why are we turning around? I thought we were supposed to talk to the captain. Well, it doesn't or... matter now, he's dead. The captain's points, dead. She points to the pyre, uh, to what would now be a very unattractive image and smell, and just be like, th that is what I was coming to try to prevent. Um, I'm not familiar with red wizards. Are you in any kind of danger? Can they do that no. to you? Okay. No. That's not what they would do to me. Um, I, we can, we can go talk to the captain later. The captain looks very busy right now. And I think we should just go to the inn and, and get our, um, our belongings put away and some food. There is a woman over there who looks it's just like her. She Ooh. does. It's uncanny. Really? I see it. Is that your mom? Who? She, the elf turns to look at Etten. Sarkia turns the uh, other direction. Well, you're as right. As she, can. she squints, waves, and approaches the party. Sarkia starts walking away. Tarkia, look! She does look like you. That's crazy. Walking, we're walking, we're walking. Are you trying uh, to get us to come with you, or are you just nope. walking away? Nope, she's just walking away. Cool. Elephine, did, did she... What, what did she do when she... Does she know her? Maybe they... It's like wearing the same outfit to a party. I I don't know. She would approach Etten, since he's the one that waved. Hello! Yes, I am Aiden, official town greeter of Dugan's Hole, and now I can be official town's greeter of East Haven, unless you already have that title. Hello. Hello. You seemed familiar for a moment. I may have been to Dugan's Hole a few times. If you blink, you miss it. <laughs> It is a very tiny hamlet. Not a lot of people there. No. no. What's going on here? We don't burn people there. We just don't use fire for a night. Mm. But from what I know of this person, they deserved it. Ooh. It is both a sacrifice and a punishment. They've... Two trout with one stone. <laughs> yes. Say, do you know these people? And she points to uh, uh Alizé, and uh, Sarkia, who are, like, moving away. Oh, yes, we're all best friends. No, no, we're... Sarkia booked it. I didn't leave. I'm hey, just Halifine standing there staring. Stayed. Sarkia Slack jawed. It. Just just staring. Sarkia would be a, a decent amount of feet away at this point. Or meters, whatever we're using. Look at hey, yes. international. We're all best friends, and we're saving the world. I know them quite well. Etten, Etten. Oh, your, your adventures. Uh, well, you, you could say that, but we're on an, uh, a sacred mission from Lathander. I am, I am uh, a priest of Lathander. His light go with you. you know, I did I... prepare a spell this morning that I don't usually prepare, so if you would like to marry anyone, I can do that. Today only. I do not wish to be married. Okay, um... but if you change your mind... Yeah. Uh, who 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 are are you? Are you from here? Uh, you can say that. 
I've been living here for nigh on 30 years, I believe. It's been some time, but oh. as I'll, one I'll... of the... Oh, oh, sorry. Yeah. She was going to say as one of the fair folks, I don't count time the same way the um, lesser-lived races would. I'll turn to uh, Alize and just say, oh, well, if she's been here for 30 years, she can't know Sarkia. Do, do you say it like she can't, can she, can she hear you too? I mean, I'm not whispering it. Yeah, okay. It's not like a secret if she can't know her. Yeah. Um, yeah, That's... that was strange. You really look like our friend who just left. She was hungry. She wasn't feeling well. I don't. Yeah. Um, it was like everything was wrong all at once. I don't know what happened there. Did Did you get to see what she looked like? Very briefly. Hmm. But everyone is unique and beautiful in their own way. I mean, no, look you guys like were like first glance, exactly but... the same. Yeah, you didn't notice that. I would. I guess I would have to see her face to face to know. Huh. Can well, I just like picture you? But your, her eyes were a little different. But your eyes are very unique and yeah, they're really pretty. Uh, yeah. Um, can I can I do an insight check to see if she knows Saki or like she's not being truthfully to us right now? Um, sure. Make a make an insight check. Uh, and I will just get something out, uh, just in case. Just gonna get the battle map ready. Nah, 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 nah. I gotta get a battle map ready for a boss fight with Auril. I guess we're dead. Um. Miss you all already. Mm. <laughs> yes, okay. Um Oh great. I thought I could find it that way. Do, 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 do. You're just leaving Kelly in suspense. Yeah, I know, my bad. Uh with I a mean, no, seven... I mean I'm not in suspense. It's no, I know exactly what this, this jerk's doing. I mean, I'm in suspense. She she is not lying at all. Um, she is a little off, like off-putting, but it might just be because she's an eccentric person. I mean, but um, so we were told the uh, what was it called? Um, Philippine white lady the. There is an in apparently, so uh, probably that's why she's had it. Um, and we're gonna go check in. Most likely, would you like to come and you know eat well, something if, with us, or if you're inviting, sure. Certainly, I will come with. Uh, well, uh, hold on. Uh, shouldn't we figure out if we're gonna get set on fire first too? Oh, oh. This one uh, did something vile and got caught. You don't intend on murdering anyone in town, are you? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> no. Uh, Hellophane. Of course not. Then you're fine. What did he do? He preyed upon the niceness of a group of travelers almost a, almost a month ago now. Fishermen dug up their corpses from the from Lake Dinashir. He spun about a story of I don't know, needing help or something. There was a 
a cave by the shores of the lake that um, contained a magic item of some import. You know, the type of things that would easily attract uh, adventurers and fortune seekers. Like we fish? L huh. Perhaps. Mother... So what did they get the magic Sorry, item that wasn't for from you. the cave? Oh, he... Uh, I'm not sure. The captain would probably know more about it, but from what I've heard, uh, he murdered them while they were rowing the boat to get there. Oh. That seems silly. Yes. Bed form. Well, why would you why wouldn't you wait until you got back because then you have to row all by yourself? Who could say what wizards think? Well, they think a lot. That's kind of the idea, right? Like a wizard would be smarter than to do that. Yes. Um, maybe These he are... wanted to hide the bodies far away from town. These are great questions, but should we continue this inside a building where we can get food, warmth? I'm tired. It's cold. Meanwhile, Helafine is standing there looking confused, covered in blood, and like her clothes are torn. She looks like shit. You do look like shit. Yeah, I do. But who hasn't seen a little blood in their lives? They did just set a man on fire. Where did Ragnar get off to? Well, that is a good question. Ragnar, you were watching the, um, the crowd and uh the um the burning of this wizard and you couldn't help but notice uh that a few people are darting about the crowd in and out um picking pockets or for the most part i should say attempting to pick pockets because most of the people here have very little um so um it's rather difficult for them to find anything um however you would notice um one such person probably a maybe a young teenager wrapped in heavy furs it almost gives them you know the shoulders of a, a dwarf almost in like their bulkiness um and uh that person is approaching someone from the back and uh you can see the their target has a um a satchel uh a, big enough to fit a book in um, that is just tied by a simple string around a piece of bone. For where? So I'm, I'm, I'm elevated because I'm on my axe speed. So. Oh, yeah, you would. Uh, it, it's, it's, I don't know, 20 feet away from you. Shoot him. I mean, uh, you all may not know this, but pickpocketing is 100% legal in this town, so he would not do that. Uh, does the book look valuable? The person behind opens up the satchel and fishes a hand inside and retrieves... It's not a book. Um... It is uh, dry, dry cheese, 
and a few more rations and a handful of coins. They look left, right, and they fade away, like by magic, disappear from sight. Can you make a perception check? With a seven. My pain. Um, you, you know, just with your passive perception, you can see a few of the tracks that left that they left in the snow. But they probably, you know, immediately thought better and tried to stick to places that people had trampled. So uh, the um, the tracks fade away rapidly. Wow, that's good on them. But I'm up to the front here, looking across the rest of this mm -hmm. group and this elf who's rallying up the crowd there. Well, she's not rallying up the crowd anymore. She right, went up but, to talk to Ed, but yeah. Yeah, okay. Ed and, the, and I had noticed somebody familiar stalk around the side and then sort of sneak around and then run away. Yeah, well, that person, that sort of wide-shouldered, uh, you know, shorter, and we'll say dwarf-looking person, uh, because it could as well have been a dwarf. No, he means me. Oh, oh, he you. He very kindly let me know in whispers that he rolled a perception check and saw oh, me. Oh, yes. Uh, yes, there is definitely a Sarkia running away. I would just have a very interested look at my face. But the captain is still here, essentially, like, trying to disperse the crowd, I guess? Well, or... she's just... Now that the body is burnt, like, she doesn't mind if people get a little closer to the bonfire for warmth. Uh, so most of the uh, militia members are, are scattered and not really paying attention. She's She looks like she's done for the day and she's about to uh snake through the crowd and just leave then i would sort of hustle up alongside of her and ask her what other trouble have they had recently here oh no introductions straight to the point It's usually the quickest way to get things done. Besides, you seem to be quick with your justice. Quick and efficient. What is it you want to know? Troubles? We've got plenty. Lack of food. Lack of water. Lack of trade. We've got criminals all over the place. And if that wasn't enough, we have pressure from the other towns because the ferry is stuck in ice. But that is a matter for the speaker to solve, not mine. I am still looking into um, a string of petty crimes, which normally would not concern me the slightest, except that in these times, even stealing one fish from a fisherman might cost an entire family their lives. I'm not for that. Uh, gonna start uh, burning some thieves next, huh? Might run out of firewood for that. Plenty of ships stuck in the ice. We don't know how long this is going to last. True. No, but uh, about this one, though. Wizard... Red wizard, I heard in the crowd. A red wizard of Thay, yes. Nasty business. What exactly is he doing here? Oh. Um. Good question. He came in here looking for people to help him on an expedition. Nothing that really concerned us. 
he specifically wanted non natives adventurers people that wouldn't be missed non natives to help him find something here that seems odd well apparently there uh, there is a cave in the lake um few miles away from town. I haven't sent anyone to investigate yet. But there is an entrance to a cave that appeared almost out of thin air. Um, it is built almost like a dam on the side of the lake. Something that should be flooded the moment that the ice thaws. Is it um, to the northeast of town? I'll just let Simon open up his map again <laughs> to make sure. Yes, northeast of town. Northeast is the same direction those tracks we found earlier went? Yeah. So that's, that's what Ragnar thought. So he's going to hold that thought to himself and for a quick moment give her a quick look over. Does she have anything remotely on her that might make him think at all that she is related to the Zentarum in any way? Um, not really. Do you have your... Um, do you all have Legend Keeper up? I do, yes. Okay. Uh, Captain Imdra Arlagoth. She's in the NPCs. She's basically dressed the same as in the picture, like I described her earlier. Long black locks, uh, dark brown skin... Uh, armor, except that she's also wearing a heavy fur-lined cloak over everything, and her longsword is strapped to her back. Um, she does not have any pins on her. No markings. No markings. No visible and, tattoos. No, and she does not bear the colors of the Xantharon. Like, all the little things you picked up as a harper in your life to try to identify the Zents, she doesn't have any of this. She seems to favor dark colors, but that's it. Just kind of casually note, it's like, so along with the, this cave appearing, has there been any sightings of bears close to town? Bears close to town. Um, I remember some of the uh, um, Goliaths that were passing through a few might have been a 10 day or two ago it's hard to keep track with this and she motions to the sky um, they made mention of a uh, herd of owl bears a herd no that's not, not quite well a herd yeah. I'm, they probably meant a family. Owl bears aren't herd animals, but it yeah. might have been a, a good number of them. We haven't seen any, but I know that in the spring they often go come by the shores of Lake Dinishir to fish and, and mate. No, yeah, no, that's not that's not what I no. Well, um No, oh, well I'm sure it's nothing. What's that? Oh, no, just strange tracks. I'm sure if maybe you send some hunters up that way, they might find a bear or two. But I'm mm. sure everyone's keeping away from strange mystical caves that had a murder take place in them, right? Oh, the murder was did not take place in the cave. That, and she points to the bonfire behind her, that he confessed to. That seems ill-advised. He said that he, uh, as they approached the cave, he was suddenly seized with a, an intense desire to rid the world of these pesky adventurers. Huh. Yes. And then he was overcome with the intense desire to return to town and turn himself in to be thrown out of pyre, huh? Oh, he did not try to turn himself in. 
He came to town and tried to run away. Only he made the mistake coming into town to busk for a few coins, uh, showing everyone his talents in illusion magic. Mm. So when we saw someone that didn't look like anyone that we have seen before, well, I had some of my men follow him around. He tried to leave a path of misdirection before running away. We confiscated his spellbook. All of his belongings brought him in for questioning. And uh, found during a strip search that he, bared the, he bore the markings of the Red Wizards of Thay. Oh. As if we didn't have enough excitement with this and I'll do the same sort of motions to the sky that she did indeed but I have other things to other matters to attend to the yes yes thieves to find pyres to build right Keeps the populace warm. Can't fault that. I would sort of like tip an imaginary hat that I don't that he's obviously not wearing and just kick off his axe beak towards the she, only she inn salutes. in town. Yeah, she uh, military salutes you, um, and uh, leaves towards the uh, the town hall actually. And with that, we're going to take a short break. We will be right back inside the White Lady Inn to see what is happening with Sarkia. Having a nervous breakdown. Bum, bum, bum.
Icewind Dale, home to the most hardened of frontiersmen, pioneers, and nomads. Beyond the sporadic dots of civilization dwells terrifying beasts and deadly monsters. Each night before midnight, Oriel takes to the sky and weaves her spell of ice and darkness. For two years, the north of Faerun has been covered in everlasting rime. From Dugan's Hole to Lonelywood, from high atop Kelvin's Cairn down to Mayor Duwaldon. Hungry and cold, the population of Icewind Dale huddles together in empty homes, praying to the gods to end Oril's reign. Their prayers were answered. Heroes summoned by fate have vowed to break the Frost Maiden's spell. the camera so let's do a little uh shifty action over here oh i'm yeah, sorry you're me you're me can we play like this and you're me mm. <laughs> at least the now. height's a little more accurate this way <laughs> simon what? apparently now you're super quiet me what no simon that's why i said simon apparently oh, now you're super, you're super quiet, quiet. Yes, I shouldn't be super quiet anymore. Um, all right, so we're back. We're at the White Lady Inn, and um, and Sarkia entered first. Oh, people say I'm still super quiet. This is bugging me. I really did not want to switch over. What? Uh, yeah, and um, apparently, uh, Diana yeah, and I saw. You know, streaming's so much fun, you guys. Great, nothing ever goes wrong. Nothing ever nothing. goes wrong. Nope. It feels like my uh, virtual classes that I teach. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're back. We've got everything set up. So, inside the White Lady Inn. Um, so Sarkia would enter, are there free tables or is it, um, uh, pretty packed? No, actually when you enter the, uh, the white lady, um, there's barely anyone there. Most of the people were outside looking at the execution. Um, inside right now are, um, a halfling maybe middle age um, dressed in what used to be fine accoutrement uh, and he's uh, plucking his fiddle basically playing to himself um, there is a an older gentleman human um, we're talking like 80s probably late 80s uh, behind the counter, he's sitting on a rocking chair, and uh, you can barely see the top of his head beyond the counter. Otherwise, there are a few tables, like as a, a waiting room downstairs, uh, and uh, a staircase that leads up to probably the other part of the establishment where the rooms are and everything. 
there's a huge sign next to the bar nailed to the wall that says no we do not serve alcohol um Sarkia would approach the innkeep um h hello um do you do you have any um rooms available but you're gonna have to speak louder rooms available Rooms, yes, you can also form complete sentences. I'm hard of hearing. I mean, Not okay, but um, if they're available, how much are they? Uh, uh, four silver a piece a night. Four silver a room a night. Let's see if she's still got that much. Um, <laughs> I don't think she does. Um, no, she does not. Um, so she, <laughs> she says, um, oh, uh, okay, well, I'm going to think about that. My friends are coming soon. Uh, may I please go sit in the darkest corner you have of this inn, which is not at all Kelly telling Simon she's in a dark corner of the inn. <laughs> Uh, the inn is lit only by uh, candles, mm -hmm. like on each table. So it's mm -hmm. fairly easy to find a corner and just move the candle away. Or to uh, blow it out. Mm -hmm. Or blow it out. Yeah. You, uh, you sit down in your dark corner and you hear the frling on the loot as uh, the halfling jumps down from his seat and approaches you. He says... Oh. Oi, my name's Ronaldo. Who are you? Not interested. Oi, I'm not coming on to you, lady. I'm just well, introducing no, I just myself. Mean, I just mean that I'm not fond of bards. I'm sorry. It's been a very bad day. What have bards ever did to you? Quite unreliable. Well, I, maybe for the bards that you met, I'm a fairly reliable person. But, hey, okay. no, that's... Um, no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Um, no, no, you yes, don't want to talk start, to me. Let's, let's start over then. Hello, Ronaldo. my name is Sarkia. Sarkia, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you as well. So... And he, he pulls a, a stool next to the table and hops on it. Brings you to Fair East Haven. Uh, really, it's it's just, um, we're just passing through. I have my friends that are coming soon, and we're just uh, finishing up a couple of things that we took on. Put a little bit of money. Hmm. You know how that goes. Well, I should tell you right away, fair is good for naught been stuck in ice for a while oh no we're not here for the boat we're not here for the boat hmm. i'm fairly sure we're just here mostly to resupply and then we're going oh. to be on our way that's sad um the boat is like half of the things to see here and experience in east haven what is it like a museum no oh, it's like one of the two prides of this place A stuck boat is the pride of the place? Did you see the size of it? With the three masts and everything. Uh, yes, I, I know. It's um, it's very big. Actually, why is it so big on a lake? Aye. Who was brought here this way? Ah. Teleported. Teleported? That was ages ago. So not... not not portage, they actually just teleported it. Yeah. But why? Some fancy wizard did that. Um, I think they intended to turn it into a casino? On the lake? I don't know. The, uh, well, as the story goes, <laughs> the wizard teleported the boat, teleported themselves under it. 
didn't know how to swim. Oh dear. That um gave us a free boat. Seems to be a great miscalculation. It is one reason I do not really do much with teleportation. Very little. Ah. Uh, I don't know much about teleportation myself. These not feats were made for walking. You don't really know what is on the other side. Hmm. Could be yetis. Or cannibals. The journey, I say. The journey is more important. I suppose. Um, so why are you in Icewind Dale? Are you from here? I actually born and grew up in Lonelywood. Okay, I'm sorry. That is the dog. Um, <laughs> but the um, if you're in Lonelywood, um, I mean, you must have come to East Haven quite a while ago, though. Lonelywood is kind of a dying town. Ah, yes. I moved to East Haven about 15 years ago. Oh. I was called here because of a local legend. Oh, what's the local legend? What are you doing? Well, that's what the inn is for. The white lady. <laughs> you should tell your familiar to uh, be quiet. Well, that's okay. It happens. He's very sassy. <laughs> Sorry. Um, what, so what, the white lady is a legend. Why? An old one? Well, depends hold by, uh, by what standard? Halfling years? Kind of old. Human years? Sort of. Elven years? Nah, it's like it happened yesterday. <laughs> so we're talking a couple decades, or? Yeah, I decades. Mm -hmm. So what is what is the legend? I've got some time before my friends get here. What is your legend? Oh. Just don't sing it. I know the lute is just to accompany me. Uh, I'm a storyteller. Oh. Yes. My main instrument and my tool of choice is my tongue. Sarkia just, she's gonna just let that one go. She's gonna just let it go? Just, nope. Not taking so, the bait, Simon. Imagine this. Back when there used to be a cycle of night and day. And Ooh. as he tells the story, by the way, the other characters will start coming in uh, in oh. order that you you left the town hall. So uh, yes, if... I was I'm, I I purposely made it so that I'm not easily visible when they come in. Like um, I'm hiding them there. But they would be uh, you would all be like privy to some of the information uh -huh. from this legend, uh, depending on when you wish to to come in. Who says, back when there used to be a cycle of night and day over Icewind Dale, there was a fair maiden what lived in Easthaven. She was quiet, kept to herself. Apparently was in love with some big-time uh, merchant. Uh, a rich person. Or that, or she was trying to get to his rather large treasure chest. I mean, some things are worth more than others. Well, here's what happened. The man, the man and the lady had an encounter and something spooked him. He decided to leave East Haven, took a rowboat, tried to row all the way up to Cardinival. The man, being a miser, of course, took the shittiest of all the rowboats, the cheapest, the most broken, the one he could get for a handful of coppers at best. And did he put all of his money in it? Of course he did. 
And is that money still not found and at the bottom of the lake? Most probably. But that's not what the story is about. Oh. Who cares about a chest of gold? I mean... Gold's not gonna get you anything around here. There no. are other places than Icewind Dale, but do go on. The sad part is... With his dying breath... The miser cursed the wild lady. Because in his mind, it was her fault that he capsized. Her fault that he had to leave East Haven. A man not taking responsibility for his own actions. This is an extremely surprising twist to the story. Yes. It is said in the legend that... The white lady came to seek shelter in this here establishment. Mm-hmm. It was back then just the house of one of her friends. Yet as she made her way to here, the curse took hold of her. A dark phantom appeared and stripped her of her face. They found her body in the snow the next day, featureless. And then? It is said that her ghost lingers still in here, oh, incapable okay. of speech, of sight. I very much doubt that. Aye. Mm. It's what they all say. Well, that's when my second specialty comes in. Are you a ghost hunter? No. Mm, I am a ghost. It. It's, a, it's, it's, it's a great, it's a great side hustle. I am a ghost whisperer. Oh, good. And she's just going to wish that she had a drink. Mm. If you yes. want, I can set up a seance. Are we there at this point? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I said, you can come in at any point during the story. <laughs> And you said your name was Ronaldo. It's not Zach? It's Ronaldo, right? Yes, Ronaldo. Okay. I, I don't I don't wanna go find ghosts, guys. Can we I don't When does that other person come in with them? Um she would come in whenever Alice comes in. Um, Sarkia would have been, you know, nodding along and been, you know, okay, yeah, mm-hmm, no, if I need to talk to a ghost, I will absolutely call you, uh, and Who she would notice. Who talked to ghosts, Sarkia? Oh, course. there they are. Oh, yes. oh, feast your eyes upon her. The White Lady of Lake Dinashir. And he points to the elf. Oh, wait! This place is named after you? We were talking to a ghost! Wait, what ghost? And she turns and says, No, it's just... Ronaldo, how many times have I told you not to give me this nickname? And um, so Sarki at this point is sitting, you know, like with her head down and her hands like this. She's like, what? oh, God. What ghost? Uh, he believes that this place is haunted by the ghost of uh, Ooh. a fair <laughs> maiden. <laughs> a fair maiden who was murdered. Everything okay? She turns to Aiden. behind it. Uh, no, I don't. I do. I don't Go away, see. ghost! Hey, ghosts are bad. I don't like ghosts. There are no ghosts here, I can tell you that. It's just what a ghost would say! Look, she's... I'm... Yeah, yeah if you her. poke her, she's, like, completely solid. Like, she's... So I would be hearing this from outside, yeah. giving me pause to not go in, and remembering that this is the only inn in town. Yep. Or finally coming inside. Is this your friend? Ragnar, there's ghosts here. Uh, no, no, there's there's not ghosts here. No. 
while they're um, while she's occupied talking to Etten, Sarkia would like to pull up her hood and get up uh, and mumble something about going to check on the dogs and try to make it out the door. You're gonna make me roll oh. for something, aren't you? Stealth. Be a good roll. Eighteen. Well, she only has a plus one, so you got it. She doesn't see you. Mm. <laughs> Do we? Oh, I mean, she's well, you know hiding her looking. Oh, but you know so who was looking for you when he came in the door? Apparently, um. I can see Ragnar's perception checks on my D&D Beyond, so, yeah. Yeah, no, it's right there. Yeah, but I can also see it on D&D Beyond, too. Oh. It just popped up. <laughs> That's weird. Because we're both in the campaign. Uh. So. Uh, but, so, yes, obviously Ragnar sees her. But. Well, I was going to say, since you're the only other person in the, uh, in the establishment, like, everyone in the party can see Sarkia leave. The thing is the elf woman does not see her face. I mean, she sees the person leave, but mm -hmm. doesn't recognize anything. Oh, sir, you okay, buddy? Well, I was going to suggest as she was going to leave, since I was specifically looking for her, I was going to just casually catch her arm as she was going to try to leave and be like, oh, yes, Sarki, I meant to say to talk to you about something and Good. hold Let's her from outside. going outside. Let's do it outside then. It's like, no, no, I needed to get a room. The animals are fine. Sure. Weren't, weren't you hungry? Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. what is it? Um, acrobatics to try and break away? Um, if you are hungry, I'd suggest the, uh, the, we, the wet trout. Not the food here. It's not that great. And you just hear the elderly man behind the counter. I heard that. Selective, selective hearing. Natural twenty on the acrobatics check to break away from Reg. There we go. And he's not holding on to her either. He just, you know, was just casually putting. She's the like, well, fine. I'm. I guess uh, if I'm hungry, I will be going to the wet trout, which is disgusting sounding. But we're going to go anyway. Better than a dry trout. It's true. Well, no, not true. <laughs> <laughs> says, says the jerky expert. Um, well, if if some of you want to leave and uh, go for food, I'm not hungry, but um, I would love to know more about Lathender. Um... Sarkia is, is at the door and she's got her back to them. Uh, Etten? Yes? Aren't you hungry? Oh, always. I think she can wait to hear about Lathander. I think what she means that is, is that food costs money and or she'd love some fish jerky. Ooh, I have that. Oh, I'm not hungry right now, but I will take it for later. She came all this way, guys. It, it'd be rude just to leave her here. Who is this now? And I'm going to pretend like I have never seen this person before and walk up to be introduced to who. Oh, sorry, I forgot to introduce myself. Um, my name is Calistria. Hello. Ragnar, don't you think she looks like Sarkia? No, no. This ravishing beauty here looks nothing like the, the young lady that we that we know, but, uh, you know, kind taste of as they are. No, it's, it is a pleasure to meet you. I had just been speaking to your captain of the guard here. Uh, 
Oh. Captain Arlegath. A fine woman. A strong woman. Um, there may or may not be a muttered from the door. She'd better watch her back then. Is anyone else coming to eat? Yee, say we go. All right. So we have Etten leaving for uh, the wet trout with Sarkia. What about the other three? She, um, Calistria is willing to just stay and chat with people um, if anyone wants to stay here. Sarkia hasn't left yet. She's waiting to see what the others are going okay. to do. And Regna was just introduced to a ravishing young woman. He immediately like sits her down at a table. You. And he uh, wants to speak to her. Oh. If if Ragnar gets hard eyes, I'm fucking leaving. I'm booking it for the door, too. <laughs> well, he's suddenly acting like a gentleman. Which you have never seen Ragnar act like a gentleman before. At least yeah. not to any of you guys. Wow, I like what I see. Never seen you like this before. Um, so, what is your name, you handsome lad? Oh! Uh, uh, just Regnar. Regnar. She gets your real name on the first try? <laughs> no one ever said that was my real name. That's just the name I happen to be using at the moment. Mm. Then I'm stomping out, like, <laughs> angrily. <laughs> Ragnar. Um, so I assume that obviously Sarkia would notice that Ragnar and Alize are sitting down with this person. And you, my dear, what's your name? Alize. Alize. An exotic name. Where are you from? Uh, from uh, down south. Hmm. I've never um, been south yet. Oh really? You you you've been here your entire life? Almost as far as I can remember. I got acclimated to uh the cold in the tundra. Oh, I don't know how you do it. Um Well, you put on many layers. There is a certain um Je ne sais quoi, with the snow and the cold. Bless you. And, <laughs> and how it preserves beauty over time. Uh, so at that point, Sarkia will actually turn around from the door, mm -hmm. walk back to the table, yeah, pull out a chair. Yeah. Ragnar will be like, oh, speaking of our friend from the south, yeah. our, our good friend here is also from the lands to the yeah. south. They thought we were going to get some food. I'm hungry. Listen, Sarkia, she's talking about the beauty tips. So Sarkia will take a chair uh, across from this person, sit down, and then pull off her hood and stare directly at her. Sarkia. I agree, beauty seems to be preserved quite well in some people. You being rude. You... Oh. Have one of the most beautiful face I've ever seen before. Tell me, have we met? And we're gonna end on that tonight. What? What? <laughs> hey, but I'm hungry. <laughs> Honestly, I, every week I live for Etten's little mutterings in the background. <laughs> Does wet trout deliver? <laughs> That's better than what Svenolf said, moist trout. Yes. <laughs> I will order a uh. trout dish. Um. Hmm. <laughs> Ragnar's awesome. smile seems to be wider and wider. Yeah, because and you're his a heart dick. grew four sizes that day. <laughs> you're a dick. It might have actually shrunk. <laughs> 
All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna leave something for next week. Uh, but uh, yes, you're gonna leave what for next week? Uh something about well, I don't know. Guys, okay, Simon. Etten. Broke Simon. He's Etten. Yes. <laughs> you're sitting by. Uh, you're sitting. You're standing by the door, uh, saying how hungry you're getting. Yes. And uh, it just so happens that uh, on the street, you know, the door is open. You can see both, like, the outside and the inside. Um, on the street, there is a man walking by with a uh, fishing rod attached to which are five knucklehead trouts. God dang it, Simon. One of them is completely frostbitten. Foreshadowing. Yep. Ooh, wait. I don't like it. Wait, five trout and one is frostbitten? Yeah. One is like oh. completely covered in frost. Oh no. And with that message from Lathander, now we're gonna end tonight's game. <laughs> Rose's one, does it rhyme with like Larkia? <laughs> <laughs> nope. What? what? So we're gonna come back. Bad at rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> bad we're, at rhymes. <laughs> we're gonna come back next week for some more. But yes, as you guessed it, uh, this is this is sort of the uh, Sarkia backstory that is uh, starting, and then we have soon the others. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping everyone will be, will be delighted. But that oh, said, yeah, delighted. I am Simon at Wondering DM. Thank you everyone for coming. <laughs> uh, please players go around the table, shout out, uh, whatever it is that you're doing, where we can find you on the internet. And we will start with, uh, same order as the intro. So we'll start with Kelly. Hello, I'm Kelly, the opera geek. Uh, you can obviously find me here on Mondays um, playing Rhyme of the Frost Maiden. Um, I am actually on my own channel, twitch.tv slash theoperageek, several times during the week. I'm currently playing through um, Shadow of War, uh, which is the second Lord of the Rings uh, game. It's Assassin's Creed Mordor. I'm having a great time. Um, and on Thursday nights, I'm in Cyberpunk Red over on twitch.tv slash Sirenscape. It's going really well. Um, I don't really want to say the best sentence I've ever written because it does spoil the ending and I know some people here didn't get to see it yet, but it's pretty awesome. <laughs> so I do uh, suggest you come see it. Um, other than that, uh, just my channel, you can, if you follow me on Twitter, you can see all the announcements and that's it. Yeah. Next up, uh, Justin. I am Justin, a.k.a. Pirate Jesus, a.k.a. the, uh... Instigator. I, I was going to say something a little more nicer than that, but I think Instigator works. I was going to say something way meaner than that. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you can find me at uh, Pirate Jesus mm, underscore. And uh, here, where I love to bring people together. Just you. The, I, I, I live <laughs> I live for the little moments, you know. Uh Tumai, you're next. Hi everyone. I'm Tumai and you can find me as Professor XR on social media. I am also playing a VTM game and Looking forward to find a cyberpunk game um, as I just finished the main storyline in Cyberpunk 2077. 2077. Um, justice. Uh, yes, I'm Aiden. Oh, wait, no. I am Justice. And tonight I'm playing Aiden. Um, and you can find me on all the socials at Stashmandu. 
Um, I'm one half the team at Bard and Barbarian. We've got a lot of exciting new stuff coming out um, soon, including a uh, daily talk show on Tuesdays and Thursdays with our morning coffee. Um, we've got our regular uh, every other Thursday Call of Cthulhu campaign. This week we are off, um, but we will be back next week. Uh, tomorrow I'll be on Like Seven Spoons channel as um, a bard that tricks everybody into think he's he's a cleric, less so these days. Um, and um, Wednesday, Thursday, oh Friday this week we have our finale for Changeling, and that's that's going to be a lot of fun because we got to figure out what we're going to do now. Um, which I, I don't know how we're going to get out of the predicament we're in, but uh, it'll be a good time. I promise that. Um, and uh, that's about it. That's about all I got going on. And lastly, Diana. Yes. Um, so I'm the other half of a bard and barbarian. Um, I'm all the places that justice is, including our changeling finale on Friday, which is super exciting and really fucked up and just wonderful in all ways um the following friday it hasn't been officially announced yet i don't think but um i'm gonna be uh playing a couple games for renegade con some new rpgs and some fun things with some some really cool people so that's a neat thing um i'm playing a game somewhere every single night of the week so you can find me uh at Demico diana on twitter and check that stuff and uh, you can find me tomorrow over on uh, Unmade Gaming at 8 p.m. for a... Oh my god, welcome Raiders! Unfortunately, we're leaving. Um, Damn we're it, doing Mason. all the shout-outs. Um, but Pet thank you for on. coming Just by. Just raid them somewhere else. Push them on. Yeah, that's what, that's what I'll do. Train. Uh, let's let's raid some more people. But before we do that, uh, yeah. So tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern, you can find me over on um, Twitch.tv/unmadegaming. Uh, I will be um, DMing uh, GMing a game of Cyberpunk Red. Then on Thursday, over on the Sirenscape Twitch channel, you can uh, watch a very high budget, high production value game of Cyberpunk Red with. An amazing cast and an even more amazing GM. So be sure to check that out. Then on Friday, 8, 8 Eastern, 8 p.m. Eastern, uh, over here, it's again Cyberpunk Red. It's like I'm doing that all week. Uh, and then on Saturdays, you can find me over on Level Up uh, underscore TTV at 1 p.m. for Scion. And over on Praxagora Tesmophoria's channel at 8 p.m. on Sunday to end your weekend with some romantic fantasy. Uh, last session, we did a uh, truth or drink game with all of our characters, and things were shared, and things were said, and I don't remember the entire night. So that's uh, that's always quite fun. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, let me check real quick who can we raid that I have. Oh, I have Q someone. Q times, I don't have them on my list uh then not just... q times then not q times well i have here i have uh let's let's go and raid uh persephiroth okay and uh oh i don't know if that command is going to work there you go whoa 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 twitch why are you doing this because it's twitch it's like auto-filling something that I don't want it to auto-fill. There we go. So, uh, let's go say hi to Persephiroth. She's currently playing Pokemon. Um, and uh, we will see you again next, uh, next week. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye!